want to look, uh, we want to look into, want to welcome some visitors with us here today. All right. So when I mention the name once again, Canaan Church, I want you to give them a big, 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 big round of applause. Okay, to welcome our visitors here in our sanctuary here. Amen. Everybody, okay? Yeah. You want to shout, scream, or so it doesn't matter. Okay. Let's welcome Pastor Joshua and Sharon with us. Can they stand up and come on, guys? Let's give them a big hand. Welcome Pastor Joshua and, uh, and Sharon, thank you for being here with us. Uh, it's really good to see you, Pastor Joshua. He used to be Mr. Joshua in the beginning, okay? To some of us, especially to many of us, because he used to be our high school teacher in Kepong Baru. Nice, I like that sound. Yep. So the world is small, okay? Alright, the world is small, but nothing is impossible for God. God can really intertwine things here and there. You know, all for our good, all to His glory. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, so yes, uh, Pastor Joshua and Sharon, you know, stay back a little while later. We want to catch up with you, you know. Uh, you want to catch up with you, especially any one of the students here in KB were giving a headache last time or whatever. <laughs> but I'm sure we are not that of a headache. Uh, yeah. And uh, for those of you who wants to get to know Pastor Joshua and his wife, yeah, go ahead and catch up with them later. Alright? Okay? Amen? Alright, um, another thing, bef just before we go to the announcements, I want to do this, uh, our Bible study, the book of Ruth, just finished uh, on the 24th September. We want to really thank uh, Rollins, who is the head of our Christian, and just give him a big hand for planning all of this, organizing all the syllabus, and also Uncle Wang, uh, who is the facilitator for this book. Alright, Book of Ruth. Let's give him a big hand as well. I thoroughly enjoy uh, Uncle Wang, your teaching. Alright, he teaches very articulately. Uh, not just the, not, not just teaching the Book of Ruth as a love story between, you know, uh, between uh, these two person in the book, but it's, there's a lot of things packed, alright, in the Book of Ruth, especially it foreshadows, you know, Jesus that's, a, that's coming. Alright, so, we really want to thank both of them for this. And so, what do you get? <laughs> you get certificates. Everybody say, wow, okay? This certificate is to show, hey, this one, uh, okay? This one, uh, you, need, you need this to go to heaven. Uh. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, this is a certificate of compli com complication, sorry. Certificate of completion, okay? All right, we want to appreciate, we want to acknowledge that you have finished the book of Ruth. Okay, so Book of Ruth is your expertise really. Okay, it's your field of expertise. You can, you know, one day one of you could probably stand up on stage and preach the gospel on, you know, uh, you know, book, you know, Book of Ruth and, and things like that. So, you must be an expert by now already. So, I'm going to call the names one by one. Okay, and I have my wife to come and take pictures for us. Alright, as when you come, we shake hands, we look at the camera, we take picture. And then I'll say congratulations, okay? Alright, ready? And all of you, the rest of you, I want you to give them a big, big hand, okay? Alright, number one. And number one is uh, Auntie Jennifer Lai, can you come to the front? <laughs> Auntie Jennifer, come. Next one, Auntie Mary. <laughs> hey, give him a give her a better <laughs> camera. Okay. 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 Next one, Florence Chong. Thank you. <laughs> Roland Show. <laughs> 
when I call the names, keep clapping, all right? No stop, okay? All right, it's very awkward with the silent. Uncle Kim Singh is probably the tallest man in Canaan Church. Amen. God is so good. Amen. All right. Uh, okay. Announcements, everyone. All right. Just before we pass the time to our guest speaker today. Um, first of all, we had a great evangelism dialogue last week. We got like 26 attendees. Let's give God the glory, okay? And, uh, you know, uh, on behalf of the evangelism ministry, we want to thank all of you. Appreciate all of you who attended. Uh, we are very encouraged to hear all of your stories. Okay, some stories are with great emotion, great, uh, it, we were really, really touched, really impacted by it. And uh, you get to hear all kinds of people from different backgrounds, sharing different personal experiences of what it's like to share the gospel. Some people get rejected, some people don't. Uh, and sh but, but all in all, sharing the gospel is a mandate, all right? It's a commission that God has given to all of us, all right? And so, uh, whether or not we like it, whether or not if we like it or not, it's, it's, it is a commandment, all right? And we just have to learn to trust and obey and walk in obedience to share the gospel that for we sure know that saves us and will save others. Amen? All right? So, yeah, we, we really want to thank all of you who attended for this evangelism dialogue. And the next one is that we are thankful for Uncle Dominic and Auntie Susan for organizing the line dancing. Just want you all to remember be, be very, uh, just want you all to be reminded. The line dancing has been going on every Saturday at 2 p.m. All right? 2 or 2.30, I think, I can't remember. 2 p.m., all right? And you will go keep on dancing until, who knows, maybe until Jesus comes back, okay? All right? And, uh, and I, want you to, I want you all to know is that the line dancing, there are also visitors who came, you know, and most of the participants there who are unbelievers. Isn't that wonderful? All right, isn't that wonderful that uh, things like this are able to, you know, get get uh, get get uh, you know uh, participants from uh, strangers sometimes sometimes strangers to come and join us to dance and so for those of you you got you know someone that you could probably also be a uh, a nice uh, you know who could probably be interested in these kind of things yeah spread the word spread the word we're gonna have a great time I I joined once okay. And I found out that I will probably never do it again because my eye, my hand-eye coordination is really, really bad. But uh, but I'm sure there's uh, there's many out there who's very interested in these kind of things. All right, so let's give Uncle Dominic and Auntie Susan for this. All right, amen, amen. Okay, Bible study. Right, we just gave certificates for our book, the for the book of Ruth. Bible study, the next one, which is on the 15th of October, which is actually next Sunday. And starting from next Sunday, every, sun, uh, every Sunday after that at 9 a.m., uh, there will be a Bible study on the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of believers. 
which is facilitated by Uncle Matthias. Let's give Uncle Matthias a big hand. You don't want to miss this, okay? Uncle Matthias has a teachable heart. Yeah, he will have definitely a lot of things in store for all of us. So sign up, young and old, it doesn't matter. I want you to know that as long as uh, as long as you're Christian, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. Dwelling in you. Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, wherever you go, you bring the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and you touch lives and impact lives. But sometimes we don't know why we have the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we don't know who is the Holy Spirit. Okay, so come for this Bible study. Okay, you want to register, you can register at the back. Put down your names. It is free. Okay. Next one is that we have our youth gathering right after the service, okay, uh, facilitated by Damin Raj. Next slide, please. We're going to talk about mental health, all right? Mental health is so important, okay, uh, especially in our younger generation. For those of you, you are young people, you consider young, come for this, uh, come for this uh, gathering. Uh, Damin has a message that comes from the heart, all right, and to the hearts of all of us, okay? And uh, this is going to be a good time. Just, just come and hang out with us and enjoy each other's company. Um, and let Emily and Edmund know, all right, for lunch, okay, so that they can go and buy lunch. And then with that being said, next announcement is our Mental Health Awareness Seminar. It is happening next Saturday on the 14th of October. Okay, if you haven't registered, please go and register uh, by today, okay? Register and pay by today. Can you go to the next slide? All right. For those of you who want to register, you can scan now. This is the registration, the online registration. Okay. Few ways you can register. Register by scanning this code. If not, you go to the registration form at the back and write your names. Or if not, you register with Vivian. Vivian, can you stand up so that everybody can see? Okay. You want to register? You register uh, with Vivian. Okay? Alright. Next one is our Cambodia mission trip. We have five people going to Cambodia, right, to minister to the people there. Six people going to Cambodia, alright? Sorry, not five, uh, six people going to Cambodia. Alright, so let's keep praying for maybe even more, alright, of our members to go there. Okay? And, uh, and so, that, so that we can be a blessing to the people there. And if you're interested, go and see Isaac for more info. Alright? Next week on Sunday, next slide please, I'll be preaching. Alright? It's been a while, I haven't preached. I'm very excited for this message. It's about valleys and peaks. Okay? It may look, a, it may, it may look a really, uh, you know, uh, really abstract, la, but come for this service, come for this message. God has placed in my heart for all of us, especially for those who are broken hearted, alright? And God has a word for all of you. Amen? Amen? Let's just take this moment. I'm, I'm sure you all heard about Israel. Can we all pray for Israel? Alright? They've just... I don't know if you all know. Do you all know about the news? Nobody knows about the news, ah? Nobody read the news, ah? Okay, so there was a terrorist attack, a sudden terrorist attack on Israel. Just happened on it. Okay, Hamas, militant organization. So can we all just close our eyes? Let's pray for that nation, okay? Hallelujah. Father, we come before you, God, with heavy hearts. We seek your comfort, your guidance in this uh, recent attack by this Hamas in Israel. We pray for peace, understanding, and healing in this time of distress. We ask for your strength to be with the people of Israel yes. who have been affected by this violence. We ask that, Lord, you will comfort those who have lost loved ones, bring healing to those who are injured. We pray for protection of innocent lives. We pray for wisdom and discernment for leaders and governments to uh, make wise decisions uh, to, find, to find a resolution in this conflict. Uh, we pray that God, uh, most importantly, oh Lord, in, all, in light of all this, help us to remember the importance of love, empathy, reconciliation, even in times of conflict. And um, Lord, we ask that your love, your, your love and your glory to shine through us as we reach out. Even, maybe we can't really reach out to Israel per se, to those in need, just close to us. And we will work towards a community where peace uh, will prevail. 
We thank you, O oh God. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. That's all for the announcements. Everybody ready for the message? We got Pastor Sam Raj here with us. Can, uh, Pastor Sam Raj, uh, when I was reading his bio, I think uh, he's very well educated, very well experienced. All right, uh, a lot of ministries and missions everywhere. His sphere of influence really extends to different parts of the world. Uh, but he's not omnipresent. He's not God. He's doing this because of God. God loves him and he does this out of devotion towards God. Find a calling from God and God really is very gracious to him, right? And uh, I'm sure he got a lot of stories to tell with to all of us. Uh, but I mean, I think uh, it is really by God's grace that gives him the strength uh, to go places to places, to go different areas, to even spread the gospel, all right? And um, Pastor Pastor Sam Raj here has been 32 years as a mission pastor, all right, with Victory Family Center in Singapore. And uh, under the leadership of this, uh, of, uh, under the leadership of our late uh, Reverend Rick Siebert, actually, and uh, countries and cities that you know he served in was in Sandakan, Kuching, Uganda, Brunei, Guyana, and even KK. And uh, and uh, 2016, you know, they named their fellowship Grace Covenant Community AG Sabah, married to Angela, blessed with a daughter Daniela, five grandchildren. Son, uh, his son Noah Raj is 30 years old and, uh, and he is appointed as the treasurer for the AOG Saba District Committee. Uh, yeah, are you all excited? Are you all excited? All right, can we all give him a big round of applause? Welcome him, welcome Pastor Sam Raj. Hi, it's a joy to be here. I get closer, okay. Um, I'm so thankful for this privilege and honor. And uh, I have dear friends here, and Isaac and Wendy, I know them ages. Actually, 78 to be, to be more precise. Yeah. So it's a pleasure to be here. Praise God. There's a good number of people here. I pray God will touch you, use you. I'm glad to hear about the evangelism a while ago. I'm so thankful that you guys are willing to support our work in uh, Sabah, in Kota Kinabalu. I went there in 1984 uh, to Sandakan. And uh, I must watch myself. I can tell a lot of stories. <laughs> I'll keep you all day. So when I got there, uh, it happened this way. I was in Kuching, Sarawak. I was under the uh, Victory Family Center. At that time, it was known as Calvary Charismatic Center. And uh, little did I know anything about them. And on a Christmas night, uh, actually past midnight, 1983, the late Pastor Rick Seward came up in the stadium in Singapore and told me, I want you to go to Kuching, Sarawak learn how we plant churches and all that and put me on a plane about i don't know whether it was 1 30 in the morning so i went there and there was this group of people that were planting church and uh, they are called gideonites the concept from gideon uh, that took this army and so i stayed with them a month and learn from ordinary members just like you people, right? They're not Bible school trained, nothing of that sort. Just that you are discipled and to become a cell leader to that extent. And then you commit one year of your lifetime. Either you take a leave of absence from your work or resign. So the Singaporeans did that. And so I was to learn from them. And while I was there, in a month's time, someone, the mission director came and told me, and another guy, uh, I'm a graduate of PCM, he's a graduate from Singapore Bible College. And so they said, there is no pastor in Sundakan. Uh, he's leaving after two years of commitment. He's actually from Ipoh, uh, Casey Ng, Pastor Casey Ng and Davina, and said, who would like to go? 
I said, I'll go. The other chap said he will pray. <laughs> Guess who they sent? They sent me. And uh, another guy by the name of Aaron Bay, so both of us landed there. And uh, they say Sadakan in Chinese sun is hail, right? I don't speak Chinese. Sadakan, am I right? Yes. Correct me. Okay. And so it's a little Hong Kong. And so I went there and I walked the streets, knocked the doors. And Pastor Rick thought that I'm the wrong guy because I'm not a Chinese, I'm a dark skin. And so they thought I may not succeed. But you know, God doesn't see color green. He doesn't see the culture as, as well. And I uh, was there four and a half years from seven people. That's where I met my wife, you'll see her on the screen. She's in the purple floral uh, blouse. And so, in the four and a half years from seven people, we grew to 75 English speaking. And I even started a Cantonese service. Of course, I can't speak Cantonese. I had a brother read his Chinese Bible. I gave him two weeks. He went through, he was a school teacher. And I owe it to them. You know, you never do the kingdom work by yourself. No matter how intelligent you are, how anointed, you need others. And so look, Sobi and Lau, they are in Bukit they were a gift from God. And he helped me to translate. So when I speak, I speak like this, you see. So he stood there after two weeks and couldn't interpret. He was just laughing or smiling rather. Because I couldn't speak phrase by phrase. And I was a bad preacher those days. Not any better anyways. And so the people grew. And uh, sometimes you work so hard, you don't take care of your own life. You care for other people's garden, but your own garden is neglected. So I felt dried up. And I went back to my mother church in Singapore to be refreshed and all that. And so, and that's what happened. I better stop there. Now I got lots of story to tell you. Can I bring this down here? I'm a bit more comfortable down there. If you can help me, thank you. So we'll see this four minute clip. It was done by a Filipino boy who is also stateless. And his name is Kinu, he's our keyboard guy. In Sabah, the population could be three million, but half of them are all foreigners. Huh? Come through front door, never left. Came through back door, never left as well. <laughs> but we need them because labor force in Sabah is not the local people. The local people don't last long for a couple of reasons. Culturally, they are very close-knitted people, right? If there is a petty harvest, saya mau cuti, boss. Berapa lama? Empat hari. Then they come back two weeks later. So they're not lazy. It's just you need to understand the dynamics. If you go there, uh, you have to take a little time to understand the people there because they live off the ground, you know And so the foreigners work hard and many of them are Contractors if you need anything to do in your house, you won't get a local As easily as you can get Filipinos to do it for you. So can you dig the wordings? I had no time to really edit them. They are in his English is all Well, I shouldn't say bad. It's good. It's just that I prefer Shorter captions, okay? So, there you go. That's the name of our school. The lady on the floral is my wife. Sitting beside her is her niece. Sister-in-law, the Tudong lady's name is Florence.
that saying was from his mother who passed on about two years ago. Uh, Daniel Canoe's mother was a teacher at the what we call alternative learning center. 98% of them are Muslims. So how do you evangelize? You saw that boy that the, uh, they were doing some eye examination. He's blind in one eye and the parents didn't know it. The Korean team came so they helped us. So we asked them, can we pray? for your son. Oh, they said, go ahead. So this is how you break ice with them. You meet their felt needs and you build bridges. Uh, so with the school, we will have a teacher's parents association where we want to do several events whereby we can uh, get to know them, you know, just not for the children to come and study alone, but the parents to really uh, get acquainted with them, uh, do Parents' Day, uh, other events, or visit them and all that. Uh, we have a Korean couple that is partnering with us, and so these are things that we invent and vision to do, and as we do, we'll be able to share the gospel. Many of these will come from, the, because we our, our curriculum is tied up with the Filipino curriculum in, in the Philippines, so we give transcripts so they can go and continue studying over there, right? And so uh, they are from the southern part, for most part, they are all Muslims. So uh, we, and they are not a bit stuck up, lah, and also you can really share the gospel. But you gotta take it slow. That's why you have one teacher who is a Tudo teacher, she was a Catholic, married to a Muslim guy, so her, uh, her name is Florence. So the parents, feel a bit assured, you know, we're not proselyting. We, we started in our church facility and then we moved to the new building. Okay? So much for the work there. And I want to share with you the word this morning. From the book of Colossians. This is one of Paul's prison epistles. I think Pastor David said something earlier and uh, was jumped out because I read the book of Colossians this morning. You know, friends, you should stand, stand tall every time you come together. I don't care how you felt this morning or even if somebody made you feel lousy, you should feel like a million bucks. I tell you why. Because in Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, give thanks to the Father who has qualified who? You. Who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. You know, oftentimes people come to church, they, they didn't have a good week, they probably fouled up or messed up or goofed up something, and then they don't feel so great about themselves. Friends, it doesn't matter what you feel. If God qualifies you, don't unqualify yourself. Lift those hands and worship God like as if He's here in person before you. When I worship, I don't sing songs, brother. I sing to the Lord, and I'm sure you did that this morning. We're just not passing time for the real stuff. The real stuff starts when you begin to just lift those hands and let your heart go. Amen. That's worship. We worship a person. I mean, I couldn't say it any better than this. When you fall in love, and we all have. Now we need to grow in love with our spouse. We were head over heels. And when we sang, we sang like as if there was an electrified feeling going from your heart to that person's heart. Can I identify? 
Some of you are a bit shy to say that. He qualified me to have an interview. What did I do to deserve that? Nothing! Zero! When you came to him, you didn't bring anything to add on to your salvation. It was a free gift. His mercy, his grace. That's awesome. When you capture that and when you know that, when that becomes a rock, a bottom a foundation, friend, I tell you, you will love him. Sometimes I, at worship, uh, worshiping, I would <coughs> go to my phone and look for something. Instead, I'm looking for verses because I can't remember everything. I want to show you something in Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. Do you guys? I wait for the day and long for that time that this can happen. Because it's a love expression in this Song of Solomon, so Song of Songs. You don't, you don't happen to have a scripture put on here. All right, I'm reading from the NIV, but I would prefer to read from another version. Uh, but never mind. Verse 6, right? Did I say? It says here this way, right? <coughs> Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal over your arm, for love is strong as death. It's jealousy unyielding as the grave. Hey friend, there's one thing that we will never overcome in this world with death. And the grave you cannot deny. It's waiting for you. It's a matter of time. And so love is as strong as death. That there can come a season in our life that we can love Him so dearly and as unyielding as the grave it burns like blazing fire like a mighty flame that can happen you don't have to wait it's just a thirsting and a longing all right I, let me leave that one and go on to colossians chapter 4 verse 2 this is where i want to preach from but that one was just some advertisement free of charge. <laughs> Chapter 4. I want to share with you about prayer and proclamation. They go hand, hand in hand, prayer and proclamation. The verse 4 to 6. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word. I pray that you bring, Lord, illumination, bring understanding, give revelation. Help me, Lord, to deliver the word that will bring comfort, that will bring direction, that will uplift 
each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, someone once said this, the double barrel shotgun of the church is prayer and proclamation. Anybody held a shotgun before? I haven't had no. But you know the double barrel, you see them in movies? So this preacher said this, a double barrel shotgun of the church is prayer and proclamation. Proclamation is a powerful weapon for the church. In order to be an effective witness, you must be praying. And I want to talk about that. You know, Paul uses a word here called devote yourself. What is devotion? It's not casual and convenient prayers that we pray. Paul encourages, you know, this is the end part of he closing up. What he, in fact, he has never been to Colossae before. He's never even seen these people before. Because you see, I look at chapter 2. Uh, look with me in chapter 2, verse 1. I want you to know that how much I'm struggling for you and for those in Laodicea, for all who have not met me personally. So he's writing. And he's re-emphasizing something he has been talking about six times. The word prayer is mentioned here, or praying. About six times, maybe a little, maybe seven. I'm not sure, but it's about six. And so in closing off, he's highlighting what is important. The very fact that we are here and Jesus did take us home after we got saved is because he wants us to be the ones to tell others. Am I right? Can you hear me all right without the mic? Yeah, sometimes because I'm not speaking through the mic. As much as you heard just now, the Great Commission, the mandate. And this is why the church should exist. Do everything you can. Celebrate. Make it creative. But don't ever forget. The main thing is the main thing is to tell the people about the love of Jesus. That's why you and I are still here on earth. But you see, my friend, this is not an ordinary work. And you can't do it yourself. Jesus said, without me, you can do what? Some things? A few things? Nothing! Am I shouting at you? You can do zero. And so prayer is not always easy. Not the most glamorous part of ministry. That's why it's not well attended, my friend. And yet it's the most powerful thing. So the preacher is right to say the double barrel shotgun of the church is prayer and proclamation. They go hand in hand. And so in re-emphasizing all that he has said in the first three chapters, and, and he's pointing out what's important, he says this. Even, you know, prior to that, he gives you guideline how to have a Christian family. You know, wife, submit to your husband only when he is nice. So my jokes are a bit dry. <laughs> As it's fitting in the Lord, husband, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Oh boy, do we have a, do we have, do we have lessons to learn? But then he ends up, after all that, he's kind of pointing out the most important thing to do is prayer. Even your marital life, no matter how sweet and wonderful it's been, you can't be praying. Because we are people, we change over time. So the word devote, what does it mean? Again, in terms of relationship, you know, let's say if you are a soldier, you are devoted to your country, my friend. At the sound of 
an alarm or, or what do you call it? Whatever you call it, right? Call to war. You better shape up and get up and get going. Don't crawl under your bed. But if you are in love with someone, you're very devoted. Every waking hour you think of her. You want to do the things that will please her. These days you don't know where those feelings went. I'm talking to myself. Don't look so sad. <laughs> Jesus still loves us. I couldn't bring out the meaning other than things of this nature, right? You're so devoted. You think of her. That's the person you want to be. You know, oftentimes people will say, if you leave me, I'm going to kill myself. Why do they say stupid things like that? Will they ever do it? No. Leave Leave him at And some people really do it. Take their lives. For what? Relationships are so wonderful. They are so mysterious that you can't quite understand. And so when the word devote, he, Paul uses, what's the proper definition here? It simply means this, persevering, persistent, constant discipline. It's not casual, convenient, can do kind of thing. It's more than that. I am learning. I've made many a mistake before I, I, I learn, you know, some of the best lessons in life is the failures. And someone said, failure is spelled as first, how long does it go? Attack in learning. How do you spell fail? How do you spell it? Help me please, talk back. I won't eat you up. <laughs> My first attempt in learning. Because you know why? Because failures give you the, the test and then teach you the lesson. Am I right? And you'll remember it. So devote yourself really defined here as Persevering, persistent, constant, wholehearted determination. Come what may, I'm going to pray. Hey, you know what? We all start on a prayer. Let's pray, God, bring revival, and everything is happening, and suddenly you stop praying. My friend, that's the time to keep praying. That's a mistake we make. We're all so gum core. Huh? We pray, we ask God, let the blessing come. Well, God, thank you so much. Stuff. The blessings, instead of helping you, hinders you. Do I know everything? No. I'm still learning. So the first point, I want to put it this way. The power of prayer. There is mighty power there. Pray as you will and pray as you should to the God Almighty that loves you. Prayer is not pleading and begging. Prayer is trying to get into the heart of God to know what He wants for His church, for you. You are His bride and He wants to bless you. There's no one else like you on earth that God cares about than you because you're the apple of the eye, the Bible says. And so we must you heard the word push, right? Pray until something happens. But let me say, keep praying even after things happen. Keep on. You know, I went to Maui, the place that got Mahina. I was there, got burned down. I'm connected to the church there, so they flew me, they, uh, asked me to come for the conference, so I went there. You know, I mean, uh, all of us been to conference, so I thought, well, you know, we go for 
We listen to a preacher, get all fired up, two weeks you're all hangat mutan tay ayam, yeah. Then after that, you go back to base one. So I wasn't looking forward that long journey. I don't know why they bought. Actually, they could have flown me from KK to Philippines, Philippines to Honolulu, but they flew me from KK to Korea, Korea to San Francisco, and then I backtracked five hours into Maui. I don't know why they did that. So I was not really looking forward to go, but because I'm connected to the church there, I had to go. And when I went there, I tell you there was something in the air. I can't explain it. Not the first day, but as I mingled with the people in the church, I was, I was impacted. 75 year old, 89 years old, or 85, is it 86? I'm not sure, but it is in his 80s. Also hungry like a teenager for the presence of God. And they rocked up on me more than the speaker did. One of the speakers, Samuel Rodriguez, he is a uh, uh, advisor to the president, at least during Obama's time. Uh, he was a colorful preacher. He was very articulate and everything else. And I enjoyed that kind of preachers. But I'll tell you what, the people affected me. 5.30 in the morning, they are in the church. Not one, two, three persons. Brothers, there are about 70 to 85 and sometimes 100 people pray. And I see old people. Over there, I thought this is USA. I never saw so many brown people in the white country. About, there are third generation Filipinos born and raised there. There's a lot of Jap Japanese there who have been living there for second, third generation. And the Hawaiians. So when I stand up to share, I said, I, never, I thought I'm in a white country, I never saw so many brown people in a white country. Tongans, Samoans, well, they come. Chinese, not too many Chinese, Japanese, I'm sorry. Not sure if I saw, oh, there was one. Glenn, Glenn's Sam Fu, or well, he's big. And he's the man who prays for the Oh, I wish I could show you on the screen for the harvest coming in. Any, anything to pray for mission is the guy who prays, Pastor Glenn. And they pray this way since 1988. And they never went back to passive praying. You know why Korean revivals lasted longer? Because they never went back to passive praying. They prayed as they prayed before. And we need to learn, and I need to learn. They are not only in the main central church. Every location, wherever they are, they gather to the nearest place. Lahena was burned down, and I went to that place, and they had a church there. There was a Polynesian service. <coughs> and people gather wherever they can, 5.30 in the morning, and they pray. They pray for five areas. Lord, bless us. Jabez prayer. Is what? Lord bless me. Don't be ashamed to ask for the blessings of God. <coughs> so they will pray for themselves. Then they pray for the lost. They will stretch their hands. They can visibly see the main road where Maui Church, it's called King's Cathedral. It was a sugarcane plantation. The pastor heard the voice of God, bought the 10, 12 acres. Today is only three minutes from the airport of Maui, prime land. When you're walking in the will of God, you know what God, he didn't have the money to buy it. Oh, it's a long story. And so they, are, they, they have a glass like this one, yeah? So they can see the highway in front. They will stretch their hands, they will pray. Second thing, Third thing, that's the second thing. Pray for the harvest, pray for yourself. Be blessed to be a blessing. Third thing, you need healthy bodies, am I right? So they lay hands on themselves and Lord heal me. 
Anybody sick? And their practice is every Sunday after they worship in the midst of visit. Those of you who are sick in body, please come out. We need to believe. We are Pentecostal. We believe in the healing, miraculous God of ours. Am I right? Amen. And those of God of the days who say, what's your prayer request? Unspoken. What? <laughs> Why don't get us speak out? But I was saved in 1973, so I don't hear it anymore. But we used to say, what's your prayer request? Unspoken. <laughs> well, stay that way. <laughs> so what, I, what am I going to pray then? Lord, see the unspoken guy. <laughs> Come on. We are a family. We are a family. We are born. Hey, friend. Your blood relatives will stay with you as long as God permits you here. But these that are here, they will continue on to eternity. Treasure this family. Treasure this family. Love it. How many families have ups and downs? Am I right? Are you all lovey-dovey in your in your home? Never quarrel. Never, never look the you know evil. Well, if looks can kill, some of you have them. <laughs> I've got to watch it now. You be my timekeeper, where's my phone? It's okay. All right. So that's the first part, the power of prayer. Disciplined, consistent, persevering, persistent, whatever word you want to throw in there. Determination. I got nothing but him. I want to touch. And I think, I think, if we go that direction, that what I read in Psalms of Solomon 8, verse 6, can happen. And it needs to happen. The next thing Paul said here, not only to be devoted to prayer, he uses, he, he says, being watchful. Being watchful. What is that? In other words, being alert, spiritually alert. Not only what is happening around you. We heard just now, we prayed for Israel. But you see, my friend, there is a, another side to it. That is necessary. That's that 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 you should do. What Paul is trying to say here is to be more alert of what God is doing in the surrounding of what is happening. You've got to get an insight into why things are happening the way they are happening. And that won't happen unless you spend time in His Word and in prayer. If you are wordless, then you are just going to be speculative. But if you are word based, you are going to know what God is trying to tell you in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the storm. The whether you go through it yourself, in, in your personal walk or even as a nation. God tells his secret to his prophets. You got to be word people, brothers. You got to pour yourself into it. I mean, I don't do that so much, and I am guilty of not spending quality time. But we need to read the word because the word reads us. And so, the word, he says, be watchful, be alert. What is happening? What God is doing? Be alert of what is happening around you. But be more alert of what God is doing in the surrounding. Spending more time in the word and prayer then watching the news is more necessary. Some people, they say, well, oh, I cannot do without my coffee and my newspaper. My brother, newspaper doesn't carry any good news. <laughs> They're all full of bad news. I'm not saying be so spiritual, you're not earthly use. Be bright, know what is happening, but have an insight. It's almost like having a third eye, but that's a wrong thing to use, right? Say, Pastor, are you a Hindu or what? 
of a lack of a better word to get an insight of what God is trying to talk at. Say, God, what are you trying to say? It will come. Maybe not immediately. That's how you become prophetic. What is the fancy word, prophetic? You just to know what God is trying to tell you in the midst of the storm. And you got a recipient of that. You have that hotline with God. And God wants to communicate with you. Because He has chosen to work through you. And no one else. You're the only missionary in your office. You're the only person next door to your neighbor that is a salt and a light. Pray for that. Read the word. Let the word read you. The act of praying is simply prepares you to be watchful. Even prayer, taking time with God in that, you know, prepares you to be watchful. In other words, it helps you to bring alignment to your life, to your mind, to your spirit. Don't you all need that? I need it. It's a preparation to be ready and to be on guard for that day. For you do not know what the day be for. Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of it. Self, so, but you need to be on guard. You know, whenever I get to my time, my, I'll just share with you how I do it. I'll turn on the YouTube, I put on those worship, I see those people worshiping God. Full on, you know, they just immersed in this awesome love. It affects me. That I was sitting there also enjoying it. And then I would just let my heart go. Whatever you're comfortable with, <laughs> worship God. Pray. Get connected. Your father. You know, we used to sing a hymn, I come to the garden alone. I can't even sing it. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. Mr. Joshua, you know the song? Him. You heard before. When did he tell you he, you are his own? He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share. As we dare breathe there, no others as ever known. We've got a few singers here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful lyric. I'm already at 12 o'clock. Lunchtime. <laughs> well, that's what. And then he said, We must be thankful. The next word, the power of prayer, the power of watchfulness. There is power in being thankful. My friend, many a times the supernatural is closed on you because you're not thankful. We're all championing grumbling and complaining, just like the children of Israel. And not you. Maybe me. They all look like so thankful people. <laughs> but there is power in being thankful. There is a book that was written in the 80s, I think, or was it in the 70s? Prison to Praise. I've never read the book before. I only know the title. But it's something to the effect by praising God. You open the floodgates of miracles to happen because thankfulness impact your faith. You want to defeat fear, uh, fear, be thankful. I got a lot to say, man. What time do we pray? No. Mr. David. <laughs> well, that will be midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Can I go until 12 to 12 or 5? Yes. Okay. So, you know, I got lots written down here. His steadfast love and tears for? Amen. Be thankful to him. I'm learning to be thankful. Sometimes, you know, I get out on the right side of the bed and my wife gets up on the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> or maybe the other way around. And then she's not very smiling. I am thankful. 
<laughs> I am still thankful. I'm committed to. I married her for better, for worse. Some of you say I pray that death comes fast. <laughs> for better, for worse. What? How does it go? Help me here. In sickness and pain, till death do us. Some of, some of you want want that to be hasted, right? You look like you guys are different from a different planet. <laughs> Maybe I'm the one having the problem. In Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22, 23 says what? You guys don't put up scripture on screen, huh? Oh, you read your Bible. <laughs> Easy for the preacher, huh? I got to turn to all these places. Takes time to. Chapter 3, verse 23. I'm sorry. Verse 22, chapter 3. Lamentation, right? It says, Because of God's great love, we are not consumed. Are you? Oh, goodness me. Thank God you're not God, man. You would have consumed me long ago. And some of you uh, hear yourself saying, if I'm not a Christian, I already beat you up more. <laughs> what? In other words, you have the desire to beat up. You're restrained because you're a Christian. But you punch him upside down in your mind already. Throw him in jail. The more angrier you get, you are beating him up. The Bible says, because of your great love, we are not consumed. So how do I forgive someone? As Jesus forgave. It's in Colossians. So forgive one another. Let's read that, yeah? Because it's in the Colossians. By the way, this is the first time I've been officially invited to come and speak in a church. In Sunrajo. I've never ever volunteered or offered myself to come. For your for the record. Alright. Uh, chapter 3. Verse 3, verse 13, chapter 3, verse 13. Bear with each other. Oh my goodness, better do. Bear with each other. Alright? And forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord. He did not consume you. So you better be grateful. Huh? Don't ever say, if I was not a Christian, huh, you finish off. <laughs> you are a Christian, my friend. Don't go back and talk like that. That part died already. Don't resurrect him. Your twin brother. Alright. And then it says what? For his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Be thankful. Be thankful. The power of thankfulness. It will destroy fear. It will destroy, you know, uh, uh, whatever, whatever is in the way. Hey, some people can believe God for destiny in heaven but cannot give tithes because they're scared tomorrow God will not feed them. How is that logical? You entrust your whole soul and the future in the hands of God for eternity but you cannot trust God for two days? That's absurd. I cannot understand for my life. They love God, they're faithful, they sing, they lead worship, they play music. But when I come to time, I don't see their ties. Give us this day our. He's a loving father. He didn't consume you. You think his faithfulness is not great every day. Come on, give me a break. You don't want to tie your business love. But I'm telling you, you're losing out big time. Big time. I gave Brother calling Pastor. I said <laughs> a message to see that Pastor that I'm under, Pastor Dr. James Morocco. He said for years he has told his congregation, one day I want to give a million dollars. And that Sunday, Vision Sunday, he had a million dollars in his pocket. He could use it for himself, but he gave it. 
and he told the rest of the congregation to do the best we can. <coughs> My friend, God never shortage you. He will never make you eat sand or grass, I guarantee you. If when you eat sand and grass, come call me. I'll join you and say what Lot's, not Lot's wife, Job's wife said. It's impossible. So I don't want to talk about the people. My wife said, don't, don't talk about tithing too much. You're making it a law. But I cannot understand. You are willing to trust God for your eternal soul. But how is it that that 10%, in fact, 100% belongs to God. He allowed me to give 90 and you cannot give him the 10 It's an honor. If you haven't arrived at that, go study the Word of God. Colossians, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, I think it talks about bringing, bringing some... Oh man, goodness. Is it 3? I'm not sure. It says, Honor the Lord with your wealth. Verse, verse number... Nine, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled with overflowing, and your wets with will brim over with new wine. Brother, whether you believe this word or you is God's word or it's just man wrote that down. It's up to you. The choice is yours. You know, I have I have traveled to say these nations because Singapore sent out missionaries just like you to plant it. So I had the privilege of going to Guyana, Uganda. I took my family. I didn't have money to buy a house for myself. I raised my daughter. They are homeschoolers. She went to Australia to study. And even in jail, at one time I worked in a business because I thought she'll get a scholarship. She didn't get it. And she became a speech therapist. One, one time here in KL, I went to a full boss of businessman meeting. The guy said, he's a developer. He's told his children, forget about overseas. I can't afford it. I kept my mouth shut. I didn't tell him my wife, my daughter was in Australia. How did I pay? I don't know. God touched certain people's heart. They gave me money. She came out as a speech therapist. Today she has given me five grandchildren. My daughter is quite mixed, right? I'm Indian, my wife is a Kadazan. She got a great great grandfather Wong, so there's some Chinese blood there, I don't know how many percent. Then she's married to Orakute. So my grandchildren are all like Ray Roger. <laughs> <laughs> I have five grandchildren. Did you know my daughter gave us money to build a house? 140,000. My wife said we have a land because the native people are just like Abrahamic people. Are. They have inheritance from their ancestors. So anyway, she said we don't have the money. She said, why you say that? She gave us 140,000. Then we wanted to buy a car. I have a Waja car. It's about 23 years old. But, you know, we thought we need a car. My daughter bought it cash. For us, I was. If that's not the blessing of God, what do you say? Amen. I never saved. I bought a life insurance. If I die, I don't want my family to be on the streets. The responsible thing I did. But God never shot me. And I'm a living proof to tell you I have the audacity to say that. Hallelujah. Thankfulness. But you know, thankfulness is twofold. One, you're thankful for what God will do, but you also need to be thankfulness. The other, other, other meaning is worship. You know, it's like what? Sometimes when the blessing of God makes you rich, you can become prideful and arrogant. And that can happen. For that reason, uh, in Psalms 139, verse 22-24, 139, I give you scripture so that you know it's not my opinion, yeah? 39, 
Am I right? Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. Test me. Know my anxious thought. It's an introspection. So there is one aspect where you begin to look and thank God for what He has done and will do. But there's another aspect that you need to look inside of you and say, these blessings are not because I'm so smart, I'm so clever. It is the mercies of God. And, it, uh, and, and uh, let's read on, yeah? Test me and know my anxious thought. See if there's any offensive ways in me and lead me in the pathway of everlasting. So there is two aspects of thankfulness. One, what He has done and what He is doing. Going. In all that promises is a provision you can apply yourself into. But when you are blessed, be careful that you need to search. I think somewhere, Paul, uh, uh, in fact, sometimes these thoughts come and I write down and I don't know where to find them. I think David said, God, don't give me too much, lest I forget you, don't give me too little, then I curse you. You know that verse? You find it yourself. Because you see, arrogance and pride can come in. This is a posture. This thankfulness is an introspection to be posturing yourself. You know, you check against the trappings of pride and arrogance. We are not indispensable. We must realize that all success and blessing are only by His grace alone. And that's who you are for what God has done. Everything happened in your life is because of His grace and mercy. Everything. I can't be thankful. Alright. Finally, I'm rushing. I'm, because I'm quite long-winded. I wish I could do it less. Then he says this. Huh? This is where I want to stress. You know, also the alertness. I forgot one more thing. The alertness has another aspect with the second coming of Christ. Be watchful. Not only as you look at all the events happening and you hear, this is also a reminder for you to get ready. Hey, friend, not get ready to go home with him. Get ready to bring as many as you can. And that's why Paul goes on to say, I read until verse 6, right? Why did I do that? Because he says this in here. You know, pray for us. He didn't say pray for me, the champion, the apostle. He said pray for us. It's a team effort. It's never one person. And I just told you that. All right, he said, God may open a door for our message so that we can proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains and pray that I proclaim it as clearly as I should. And be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. My friend, are you adding value to people that you come in contact with? Are you speaking things that are positive? Do you honor one another here in this family? This is why you practice giving value. Be wise to the outsider. Before you can do that, you got to, because it says, oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself, really. It says here, let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that every mind, everyone knows how to answer. In other words, what he's trying to say, flavor one another. You practice here before you practice outside. This is, this is, this is practice ground. Love one another, flavor one another. Of course people are different, they make mistakes. Don't make a big deal. Get on. That's the love of Christ. Then Paul is talking about proclamation. This is the power of proclamation. What the people need is not to go and tell you, go to hell, my friend. You got to tell God loves you in spite of who you are. They already know they are guilty of their sin. You don't have to remind a sinner that he's a sinner. He knows it. You get around people, sometimes they feel uncomfortable, not because you have done anything wrong. Just the presence of God in you makes them feel uncomfortable. You got to show them the way. And then Paul lists down, if I read further in this ending part, all these people, he named names, and I'll read it for you just quickly. He says, you know, my fellow prisoner Atticus, I don't know, Ariticus, whatever it is, greeting, and then Mark, his cousin Barnabas, and then he goes son Jesus, who is called Justice, sends his greeting, and then he goes to Epaphras, and then he goes down and says, who else? Uh, uh, Nympha. Nympha is a lady who was a pastor of a house.
Yeah, I better quit now. Can the worship team come play for me the song? I chose this song because I find the lyrics are so wonderful. I want to leave you with this, the power of prayer, the power of watchfulness, the power of thankfulness, the power of proclamation. That's what is there in the six verses.
Let me thank you this morning. What an awesome God. What a love you have for us and your people here this morning. There's none of them here that disqualify. They are all qualified. You qualify the unqualified. Because of your great mercy, they are new every morning. Even so this morning as I deliver your word and I have, Lord, you touch them. Let the word continue to speak to them. Then they come to you, the fountain of life. The living water that quenches every thirst and every dry ground to be watered, to come alive, come alive, come alive. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. be refreshed, be renewed in your mind. Oh, the Lord loves you. Amen. In spite of who you are, God still wants to use you. Amen. It's not over until He says it's over. Hallelujah. Break my heart, Lord, breaks your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just thank you for each and every individual here. We are collectively a family, bought by the precious blood of Jesus. The priceless blood of Jesus has cleansed our heart, healed our broken dreams, restored everything that has been lost. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and believe right now for a refreshing from above. Yes. The Spirit of God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's continue to lift up our hands. Lift up your hands in such a way you receive the blessing for today, the benediction. Thank you for your word of God today. Thank you, Lord, for that powerful word of God. Hallelujah. May the power of prayer fill your heart and hope. Thankfulness be your constant companion. In moments of need and moments of plenty, may you find solace, strength, and serenity. May your gratitude shine like a beacon of light, guiding you through life's darkest nights with each whispered prayer and each thankful thought. May you bless, may you be blessed with the peace that can't be bought. We thank you, O Lord, for today. We thank you for your word. And may the word of God not only sink into our hearts, convict us, O God, pierce through our hearts, that Lord, we will never be the same, but all for your glory, O God. We love you so much. Bless as we live, that we may continue to live for your name. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Alright everybody, God bless all of you. See you on Wednesday for prayer service.